tried to help and chewed up my closest mm -hmm. friends. Can we acknowledge ourselves for showing up here today? I'd like to ask you to just take a breath for a minute. Just relax. <clears throat> and I'd like you to ask yourself, what is the freaking point? <laughs> what is the freaking point? Because that's what we're going to work with today. That's going to be the core of the Course in Miracles talk today. So, I just want you to take a breath for a minute and remind yourself of why you even bothered to come and let yourself have this experience today. Mmm. And I got a little sentence I want to use from the Course in Miracles workbook today, the workbook lesson number 146. We're going to use it just to get centered. And so don't worry about it. Just close your eyes. Just receive from me for a minute. Because it's just a couple of powerful sentences that we're going to say, that we're going to do right now. Ah. Some funky God music. <laughs> funky God music. Got to have some funky God music. My mind holds only what I think with God. My mind holds only what I think with God. My mind holds only what I think with God. My mind holds only what I think with Say it silently to yourself. Holds only what I think with God. My mind holds only what I think with love. My mind holds only what I think with love. My mind holds only what I think with love. No one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. No one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. No one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. No one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. No one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. No one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. No one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. You cannot fail if you seek to reach the truth. You cannot fail if you seek to reach the truth. You cannot fail if you seek to reach the truth. My mind holds only what I think with love. My mind holds only what I think with love. My mind holds only what I think with love. My mind holds only what I think with love. I loose the world from all I thought it was. I loose the world from all I thought it was. I loose the world from all I thought it was. I loose the world from all I thought it was. That's the same as I release the world from all I thought it was. I release my world from all I thought it was. I release the world from all I thought it was. I release the world from all I thought it was. I loose the world from all I thought it was. 
I loose, loose, release, release, let go, let go, it's time to let it go, it's time to let it go, it's time to let it go, it's time to let them 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 go. It's time to let that 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 go. I loose the world from all I thought it was. I loose the world from all I thought it was. My mind holds only what I think, what I think, what I think with God. so that you don't lose your peace. And if you don't lose your peace, you can hear your inner guide. Mm -hmm. If you hear your inner guide, you'll know what to do. So the purpose of the course, the purpose of the course, <laughs> the purpose of the course, the purpose of the course is to give you a new interpretation of everything that's happening in your life so that you won't lose your peace and so you can hear the divine within you telling you what to do with that stuff. <laughs> All right? Everybody clear? Mm -hmm. If you're sad and miserable, according to the course, your perception is incorrect. You are the one that's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not what you think is wrong. Your own mind is incorrect. Like today, I'm going to do a section called The Needless Sacrifice. It's on page two... Um, 317, if you got the book. I got some extra books up, up here. I like one. Okay. Right here. Hello. 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 How deep do you want to go? All the way, baby. All right. Okay. How deep can you get it? All right. I like the way you think. This isn't a church service. This is not a church service. This is not a church service. Okay. 
Okay, so get rid of that I'm in church bad and just kill right. the good joy, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you how the Course of Miracles will kick your butt no. at the same time. Beyond the poor attraction of the special love relationship, beyond the poor attraction of the special love relationship, yes. and always obscured by your attraction to the special love relationship, is your powerful attraction, is the powerful attraction of the Father for the Son. Let me give you the English translation. <laughs> Beyond my attraction to having a special relationship with you, what's hidden by my desire to have a special relationship with you is the powerful attraction that my creator has for me. Mm -hmm. wow. Beyond what I'm feeling toward you mm -hmm. is the attraction that God has for me, love has for me, the universe has for me. The universe has a bigger attraction for you <laughs> than you have for somebody else. Wow. There's something that loves you and wants you more than you want somebody else. That's good. Wow. I'm glad to hear that. Now, here's the trick that we are all finding out if we be honest with ourselves from the time we were young teenagers or younger. There is no other love that can satisfy you. There's no other love that can really satisfy me other than the love between my creator and me. The, the love that's going to satisfy me is the love between me and God. The love that's going to satisfy me is between me and my creator. The love that's going to really satisfy me is the love that comes from that which created me to me. Now, notice the course is not saying maybe there is no other love that can satisfy you. They say perhaps yeah. there is no other love that can satisfy you. try a few more out. Yeah. Uh, it says the reason why there is no other love that can satisfy you other than the love between that and your source is because there is no other freaking love. <laughs> there is no other love beside the love of God. There is no other kind of love. There is no other real love that we don't have to believe. Mm. He says... This is the only love that is fully given. This is the only love that's fully returned back to you. Mm -hmm. So it's the only love that you're completely having, having given to you. And it's also the only love that's really fully returned. You give it, you receive it fully. It's being given to you. It's being received fully. You know, sometimes there's nothing worse than giving your love and looking like you're not receiving any back. No doubt. Woo! Have you ever had an experience like that? Where it looked like you were like giving it up the best you knew how to do it. You had just read the latest Cosmo and everything, the right underwear, everything. And still, the love was not returned. Yeah, it was back. The way you wanted it back. You know what I'm saying? You like you just gave it your all in all. Well, then, of course, the miracle says, well, if it's a real love, it's going to be fully given. If it's a real love, it's going to be fully returned. One of the things I always like to tell beings in female bodies about beings in male bodies is this, if you're ever wondering about specialists. I just, you, know, you may not want to believe it, then I might get stoned. But I'm going to tell you, listen carefully. Here it comes. <laughs> you never have to wonder if a man is into you. If you're wondering, he isn't. <laughs> oh. I'll oh. say that one more time. Look at that. <laughs> I got four sisters. You know what I'm saying? And they schooled me yeah. um. about y'all. <laughs> and I didn't get enough attention. <laughs> and I paid the price. But <laughs> I'll say it one more time. It's not complicated. Mm -hmm. Love is willing. Yes. Love is open. Yep. Yes. Love is, is, is ready. Love yeah. is available. Yeah, it's okay. So the male energy is an energy that is an energy, the masculine, it's an energy that goes out. That's what it they call it magic. It. It, it, it's like it, it, it goes out. It's the energy that goes out. It goes out. <laughs> okay? So it's our nature to go after what we want. Yeah. It's in our DNA to be the hunters. Yeah. To go after it, to get it, to pursue it. So you don't have to pursue a man that's interested in you. 
You let him know he you available in one of your subtle ways. <laughs> <laughs> like breathing. You know, like breathing. But if he's really interested, he is going to be on that like white on rice. <laughs> But if you are being directed toward a man or a man is being directed toward a woman and they're coming from their fear, their ego, their insecurity, they're not believing that they deserve love, they will always go after what's unavailable. When you're ruled by your ego, your fear, the part of you that doesn't love you, it's going to always make you want what you cannot have. So if you're chasing after something that it looks like you can't have, it is not coming from love. Love wouldn't make what's yours unavailable because that wouldn't be the nature of love. And the only love that's going to satisfy us is the love between us and God and the love between us that, that created us and us. That's what this book is saying to us. That the only love that's going to satisfy is the love of that which created you and gave you life to begin with. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Hmm. Then it says, <laughs> check this next sentence out. I know I have never been in love then. <laughs> Being complete, real love asks nothing. Uh, wow. A love that asks nothing? It's a love that asks nothing. I'm not, I don't have, I'm not full of demands. <laughs> I'm not full of scripts. I'm not full of requests for what you need to do in order for me to be happy with yeah. you or to love you. I don't have a whole lot of scripts. Uh, then it says, being holy pure, everyone joined in real love. Love has everything. The, if I'm in love, I have everything. If I'm in love, I don't feel like anything is missing. If I'm in love, I don't feel like anything is missing. If I know love, I feel whole. If I know love, I feel complete. If I know love, I'm not out here on Saturday night trying to get some, get something, <laughs> seduce, yeah. manipulate. Mm -hmm. yep. You just go out to receive, to, to connect, to communicate. Mm -hmm. Um, being wholly pure, everyone joined in real love has everything. Then it says, guess what? <laughs> this is not the basis for any relationship in which your ego enters. Now, what is the ego? The ego is the part of me that's afraid and feels separate and doesn't know what love is. The ego is the part of me that believes that there's not enough love. The ego is the part of me that believes that I am afraid of love, but I really want it. Okay, so therefore, to have my love, you're gonna have to pass tons of tests. Oh yeah, I've got a whole list of tests you're gonna have to pass before you receive my love. So, mm -hmm. and and my love is pretty dysfunctional. Yeah. So it's not even like you're getting the best love on the block. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I don't really know how to love completely yet myself. I don't know how I have some suspicions and doubts and fears myself. But I'm gonna make you work for this. Mm -hmm. So the Course says, every relationship on which a fearful mind enters, every relationship on which a fearful mind, that's ego, enters, every relationship on which the ego embarks is special. So if I'm a fearful person who doesn't know what love is and I need love really, really bad and I think there's love out there that I need to get really, really bad, then I am looking for one thing and one thing only. I'm going out here and I'm looking for somebody to treat me special. I'm looking for somebody to give me the specialness that God didn't give me. I'm looking for somebody to give me the specialness that I have not experienced so far. So I'm out here looking for someone to validate me, make me feel special, make me feel whole and complete. I am looking for specialness. I am afraid. I believe there's a lack. I don't know I'm complete. I need somebody to complete me, please. Mm -hmm. First paragraph. <laughs> What's the friggin' point? <laughs> yeah. Okay, the friggin' point is there's an attraction between you and your creator that's the only kind of love that's going to really satisfy you. There is no other love that's ever going to satisfy us other than the love that we have between us and our creator. If we're really experiencing love, we feel holy, complete, we're not scared half to death and jealous and wondering if we're going to lose them. If it's real love, mm -hmm. then I am not afraid in it. And the part of me that is not secure and does not know I'm whole, it is mm -hmm. looking for specialness. It's looking for somebody to make me feel special. That's the friggin' point. Mm. 
So whenever I'm attracted to anybody, on the other side of that attraction is my attraction to God. <coughs> I'm looking for you to give me what I wish God would give me. I'm looking for you to give me the love that I think I deserve that's being denied to me. And it could be me trying to get it from a dog. <laughs> so it isn't necessarily talking about a person. It could be me trying to get it from my job. It could be me trying to get it from how good my body looks. It could be me trying to get it from how much money I have. It could be me trying to get it because I'm so doggone special and famous in what I do. That's still my <laughs> desire to find the specialness that I need to validate me because I don't really think I'm whole and complete and I need something out here to prove to me that I'm really, really special. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody in here fall in that category? <laughs> Everybody raise your hand. Everybody raise your hand. Hello, hello. Specialists in the house. Specialists in the house. Do we have any specialists in the house? Yes. All Here's right. The house. Okay. <laughs> sure. But don't forget, this is just the first paragraph. So a lot of <laughs> so that, that you mean, I'm not, so just, you know, what I'm saying is that there's a possibility that what you what you're wondering about, I'm gonna get to it anyway. But tell me, what's your question? Um, so given that premise that the only real relationship, real love relationship, is between you and God, mm -hmm. then you, the whole need to couple and all of that is all ego driven, and we don't need that in our lives, and we'll all die out. <laughs> Which would be so beneficial to the whole earth. <laughs> but that's a whole other point that we won't talk about today. Because <laughs> mankind is definitely bringing a lot of great things oh, to the planet. Yeah. It's going down the mountain. The animals are so happy we're here. <laughs> yes. we're, just, yeah. we're just so great for our environment. Yeah. <laughs> Hell of a day if humans are here. Yes. But um, <laughs> no, what's, what, would, what would simply happen is that you would try to allow the love of God to come through you to everybody here so That's we can right. allow ourselves to experience the love of God because we aren't experiencing that right now. That's right. Mm -hmm. So the, so what it's trying to let us know is first of all, the only love that's going to really satisfy me is the love between me and my creator. And that's and, and the once I know that, then I can really start extending love because right. I'm not out here being a predator. Right. I'm right. not out here just trying to get. Yes. I'm not trying, out here just trying to get somebody to validate me and then I'm pissed off at them because they didn't do it the way I wanted them to do it and now we got to forgive each other because you didn't do it the way I wanted you to do it. You, you get rid of all those grievances that kill you and make you broke yes. when you start to know that you're so whole and complete that you don't need the validation of everybody around you in order for you to feel love for yourself. Mm -hmm. Then you're a person who's capable of really loving somebody yeah. because now you got something to give. You see what I'm saying? Okay. You with me? Okay. Yes. But how hard is it if you already are there? Like you, you already are where? Well, if you're already in love with yourself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But then you're codependent, so like you get you, you're attracted to people who aren't yet in love with yourself. So you want to help them. That doesn't help. Well, that's that's coming that's from the part that's coming from your ego too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The, the part of me that thinks I need to fix somebody else yep. in order for them to be okay is strictly coming from my ego. That's that's another way I'm trying to validate myself is my need to make myself feel so valid and so important because mm -hmm. I was there to fix them. When the, the you don't really want to fix them. But, right, but then when you don't love yourself, you always choose somebody that looks like they need fixing. Because that because that allows that allows you to take the attention off of you who you the one that really need fixing. But you don't want to, you don't want to deal with the fact that you the one really need fixing, so you find somebody to fix. Yeah. And so they just and you and when you really don't want to deal with your stuff, then you deal with an extreme case. Yeah. So it's like attracted to like the puppy dog face. You're like, oh, you're so sad. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If, when you when you got that little puppy dog face, then just realize it's a puppy dog that's face. Right. You know, as long as you don't see the Course in Miracles teaches that the only time of the an illusion can hurt you is when you forget it's an illusion. Mm -hmm. As long as you tell yourself the truth and don't deceive yourself, it's impossible to be hurt. Like yeah. if, I, if I know that real love is whole and complete mm -hmm. and that it doesn't lack anything and it's not trying to get, then if I'm with someone and I see us trying to do that, I know that we're not expressing real love yet, which means I know that we're going to go through the ups and downs that you experience when you don't have real love yet. So now you know the purpose of the relationship is for you and you, the two of you to learn how to allow real love to express together. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you know why you're together. Neither one of us really know how to do <coughs> whole and complete love. So let's use our relationship as a means for us to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. Now the relationship has a holy purpose because you're willing to let spirit or real love, which is all spirit means, come through you in the relationship. 
But you don't know I'm trying to get with you so that I can have somebody when I'm in my old age. I'm trying to get with you so I can have some security. All those are ego desires. Mm -hmm. And every time you form a relationship based on that, then you're dealing with something that's not real love, and sooner or later it's going to reveal itself as not being real love. And then that's the disappointment we go through. Mm -hmm. But we just deceived ourselves. I mean, come on, how beautiful and sweet is it to try to use somebody just to meet your needs? That's not sweet. Mm -hmm. You know, so and, and if you do feel like you have some, you're trying to get with somebody just to meet your needs, mm -hmm. why don't y'all talk about it? Mm -hmm. And at least see if it's some needs that both of y'all want to meet. Mm -hmm. And if you both agree that you got some needs that both of y'all want to meet together, have a good freaking time. <laughs> but just don't deceive yourself about telling yourself it's real love when you know it's full of bargains and you knowing that you feel insecure and you're just trying to get somebody to validate you. That's where you start. That's where you go, I know what my issues are. Let's use this relationship to go beyond the blocks and the fears that we have. Okay, but what's the friggin' point? Okay, we'll go back. The friggin' point of the first paragraph is to get us to stop looking for other people to fulfill us because nobody's going to do it. Mm. It's only going to come through the connection we have with Source. And mm. from having that connection with Source, then you draw to people who mm. you can share and give and receive love mm. with. Imagine if you're whole and complete, and you, which simply means you're happy whether you're in a relationship or not. Mm -hmm. Which simply means you're happy whether you're in a relationship or not. Mm -hmm. Which means you're happy whether you're in a relationship or not. Mm -hmm. Holy complete means you're happy whether you have another body with you or not. You're happy whether you have a date or not. You're happy whether you have a lover or not. Mm -hmm. You're happy whether you have another person or not. You are really more whole in your love. Mm -hmm. If you're one of those kind of people, mm -hmm. then you're the best person in the world to be in a relationship with because you're not going to always be the man and sacrifice of everybody around you. Mm -hmm. And so then you meet other people who are also whole and complete, and you all get together just to rejoice. Mm -hmm. You get together just to enjoy the love you are together, and then take it to another level. Hmm, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to meet whole people or people who want to know they're whole. Mm -hmm. I want to meet whole people or people who want to know they're whole. You know, I want to meet people who love or who truly want to learn what real love is. So if I'm afraid, I want to learn what real love is. If I don't know how to be committed and to really give in a relationship, I want to know what that is. So either you're seeing me love or you're seeing me want to love. All right? Got it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Got it? Yes. Yes. So Earl, um, when you were talking here about that our, our creator, our higher power, he wants us more than we want him. Obviously. And, and so hearing that, Obviously. hearing that, fear <laughs> arose in me. And so, and so the Course talks about that, that, you know, one of the obstacles to peace is fear of God. And so what I'm interested in is like, because I know a lot of this intellectually, but I want to get to the experience of actually acknowledging the fear letting it go and getting past that and embracing that love. That's and, what you're doing. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. so, okay, so that's what you're doing. <laughs> you, you, you're, you're doing it. <laughs> okay. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're here, you're doing it. You're studying, you're doing it. You're doing the workbook, you're doing it. You're coming to classes, you're doing it. You're trying to be a more loving person, you're doing it. Yeah. You're doing it. You just got to keep doing it. Okay. You got to do more doing it. You got to do it more. You got to do it more and more and more. And you know what? That's joyful. Yeah. That's a good thing because that just means you're going to experience more and more and more love and more and more and more freedom. You're going to experience more and more and more and more freedom. Take a breath, please. Yeah. 
this person, the person don't know anything about what's really going on. Establishes relationships only to get something. Fear, fearful minds establish relationships only to get something. Mm -hmm. And a fearful mind would keep the giver bound to itself through guilt. Mm -hmm. It's impossible for the fearful mind to enter into any relationship without anger. For the fearful mind believes that anger makes friends. <laughs> that is not the fearful mind's statement, but that's the fearful mind's purpose. For the fearful man really believes that it can keep somebody and get somebody by making them feel guilty. Hold on, let me finish. Now I, put, I throw it out there for question. <clears throat> this is its one attraction. The fearful man, that is its one attraction. An attraction so weak mm. that it would have no hold at all, except no one recognizes it. For the fearful man always seems to attract through love. The guilty man always seems to attract through love. And the guilty man has no attraction at all to anyone who perceives that it attracts through guilt. Woo! Another simple course of miracles paragraph. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's, let's go through it line by line right quick and then after the question now. Okay. Now, a person who doesn't know what love is only tries to establish a relationship to get something. So they're not interested in you unless there's something they can get from you. Number two. The ones that they get you, they're going to try to keep you to making you feel too guilty to leave them or to not do what they want you to do. <laughs> Anybody recognize that? Oh, yeah. Then the next thing they recognize is that a person who is fearful and doesn't really know what love is, is usually a person that's angry. And this is a person who believes that anger makes friends. In other words, when I go off on you, you'll act right, and you'll do what I want you to do, and you'll be my friend because I let you know how pissed off I am at you, and you better get your act together. So a, a, a man that doesn't know what love really is believes that being angry at everybody all the time about something, especially the person they feel is most special to them, yes. that's going to make them be friends. Yes. That's going to make them be closer. And then the court says, of course, that's not going to be that person's statement. Right. They're not going to come and say, would you be in a relationship with me? I don't really know what love is. I'm trying to just get something from you, and I'm going to try to keep you with me through making you feel really, really guilty, and I'm really, really angry, and I'm going to use anger all the time to make you stay with me. Will you go out? <laughs> <laughs> would you text me your phone number? Of course they're not going to say that, but that's the, guil the guilty, angry man's purpose, because the guilty, angry man believes that they can get and keep by making guilty. I will make you feel too guilty to leave. I'll make you feel too guilty to go. I make you feel too guilty not to do what I want you to do when I'm an angry, fearful mind. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one attraction. Then the court says it's an attraction that no one would have any attraction at all except most people don't realize it. Right. Most people don't realize it when they get ready to get into a special relationship the way the fearful mind does it. They're getting ready to get into a whole bunch of unhappy hell broken in two by peers in which you go to see Iron Man. <laughs> 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 or you go to the movies, or you go walk through the park. The average, come on, come on now. You know that if you had known what you were getting into and many of the relationships you've gotten in, you would have never got in them. So, so the reason why you get in these relationships that don't bring you happiness is you don't know you're doing it when you're doing it. That's right. And what the Course in Miracles does is it makes us aware of what we're doing that we don't know we're doing so we can stop doing it. Yeah. But, you know, it's too much doing it. But the, 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 treat, the thing to keep in mind is, if it's a person who doesn't love themselves, does not know that they're connected to source, this is the what they're going to do. Yes. Whether, you, whether you realize it or not, or whether they realize it or not, they are good people who are afraid, who believe that they've got to get, and they feel like the only way they can keep you is to make you afraid to go or too guilty to not do what they want you to do. I admit I have done it. I have tried to manipulate people through guilt and anger to do what I wanted them to do. Yep. Yep. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, don't leave me out here by myself. You know, it's like, it's like come on. Tell me you've done the same thing so I can feel more innocent yeah. and know that I want to move on. We don't help each other out by pretending that we don't do the same thing. But you know what's so cool about this? You don't even have to tell me you do it. <laughs> I know you do it whether you tell me you do it. <laughs> That's what's so cool about the truth. It, don't even, it doesn't even involve your cooperation. <laughs> 
you know, I know, if, first of all, I know if you see me as separate from you, if you see me as separate from you, then I know you're not looking through the eyes of Christ. You're not looking through the true eyes of love. You know I was just another part of you. So you'd be treating me the way you want to be treated. So the mere fact that you're addressing me as if I'm somebody else means we don't really know the love of God within us yet, and we know we were all the love of God, and we were all connected. So I can pretty much assume anybody that I meet who thinks that they're separate is somebody that has some fear and therefore will have some get energy and will be tempted to use guilt and anger to manipulate. So I would take responsibility for spending time with them and getting into a relationship with them because I already know they don't know how to love unconditionally. Why? Because they think I'm separate. <laughs> Because they think I'm not them. They're thinking that we're not one. So if I know I'm with someone who doesn't think I'm one with them, I know I'm with someone who will try to use some form of guilt, fear, anger at some time or another in order to get what they want because they're not aware of who they are yet. So then I can be forgiving. I can be forgiving when they're less than perfect. I can be forgiving when they're not always giving. I can be forgiving when they try to use anger on me because I know they didn't know what love was completely yet, and I don't either. So that makes me more forgiving. So actually, looking at it this way makes you more forgiving of the people around you. It doesn't make you hold more grievances. It makes you be more forgiving because you know they don't know what love really is, and you don't know what love really is, and you don't know how to give unconditional love, and they don't know how to give unconditional love, so you know y'all need to be forgiving of each other as you work toward learning how to be more loving. Amen. So I'd be a much easier person to be in a relationship with than somebody who tell you they love you completely and they're never going to do anything but love you no matter what and they're never going to get mad at you and you can always depend on them in every situation and circumstance. Then as soon as they don't do that, then you're all mad and you feel like they lied to you and betrayed you because they told you they was never going to cuss you out. Right. But if they had to say, look here, honey, I really want to love you, but I might cuss you out <laughs> because I don't really know what love is and I have some fear in me and that fear might make me misperceive sometimes and in my misperceptions I may say things that may be unloving. But I really want to go beyond that. I really don't want to be that way. I really don't want those blocks. Yeah. I'd much rather get into a relationship with a person like that Amen. than a person who would sit up me and look at me in the face and say they knew they were going to love me no matter what. <laughs> and then you fall for that. You know, I want to love you no matter what. I want to let the love in me come through you to you no matter what. I want the love of God to come from me to you and from you to me. I want to go beyond my selfishness. I want to go beyond the part of me that's self-assumed mm -hmm. and wants everybody to just do what I want them to do the way that I want them to do it. I want to go beyond that part of me that wants to make everybody feel guilty if they don't act out my script. Let's do that together. And in, the, and in the process, we can travel around the world, we can go to a beach, we can go to a movie, we can make great love, we can buy a house. You know what I'm saying? It's not saying you can't have all your worldly pleasures. It's just that you're giving them all a brand new purpose that will give longevity to your relationship. Because you'll get constantly turned on by somebody who you are evolving with because if you are evolving, you're going to be constantly showing each other new aspects of each other that you've never seen before yeah. that turn you on and you'll never get tired of each other. Yeah. But a fearful yeah. person doesn't like change because they're afraid they might lose. So they try to keep you in a little box that makes them feel secure. You're running around in the little box that y'all make for each other and pretty soon you know your way around their box. And they know their way around your box, and you call it, I'm bored as hell. I'm bored as hell because I won't let you be new. I'm bored as hell because I'm trying to control you. I'm bored as hell because I'm trying to keep you the way I want you to be for my own personal purposes. But if I say our purpose together is to evolve in greater and greater love and joy, then I don't know when the rabbit's going to pop out the hat, but it's going to be fun because it's rooted in love. It's coming from love. You know, so if you have a boring relationship, you're boring. You're boring. I am like sitting back waiting for somebody to thrill me. I just do that. I'm looking, I'm looking for the person that's going to thrill me. Are you thrilling? Are you thrilling? Are you like, you know, are you like a good time? And I'm like sitting back waiting for somebody to give me a good time. Like, now, I know, I know, it's hardcore stuff, but I'm ready to go on. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh. I've had enough oh. of denying myself love yes. by trying to defend my old ways of seeing things yeah. that don't work no way. Yeah. Just so I could try to be right rather than be happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, that's me, right? All right, Ginger. I forgot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come back. Don't you think like unconditional love is like codependent? No. <laughs> 
No, 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 no. Because, because codependent would be like you feeling like you couldn't give it or receive it unless you had this other person to do it. It's like, I always like to think about the sun. Real, real love is like the sun. Like, that's the best analogy I could give you. Real love is like the sun. You know how the sun is just shining and it's doing its thing and it's not really, it's not trying to be hot. It's like we try to be hot. <laughs> but the sun doesn't try to be hot. You know, so we are trying to be hot. We get dressed every night so we can try to be hot. So we're trying to be the sun. So, so when I come in the room and I'm the sun, then I'm not even discriminating against who is basking in my light. Right. And it's what I am. Yep. So I'm not dependent on whether you're in the room or not for me to shine. Yeah. Codependency is always thinking that for you to know that that's true, someone else has to somehow or another validate that for you that it's true. Now, this is what the Course in Miracles does, which is so beautiful, though. It takes our desire to be codependent and uses that to our advantage. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you do need to have another person validate you, well, this is what you do. You make sure you surround yourself with people who remind you that you're innocent, who remind you that you're powerful, who remind you that you deserve to be happy, who remind you that you're significant, who remind you that you're valuable, who, res who respect you, who acknowledge you, who share with you, who give you the truth. There's nothing wrong with having what the Course of Miracles calls witnesses. So don't even let your ego make you feel like it's not okay to have people around you that's acknowledging you. And don't make yourself feel bad because you feel like you need that. We're in the process of transforming into the whole complete beings that we are. And so in the meantime, while we're learning to be that way, it's a wonderful thing to have people in your life that'll look at you and say, hey, you are important to me. Hey, I value you. Hey, your love means a lot to me. There is nothing wrong with being witnessed to as a beautiful, desirable, powerful person. Mm -hmm. So don't take the codependent thing and then use it against yourself. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with wanting to have people in your life who validate the fact that you're a powerful, spiritual, loving, innocent mm -hmm. being. Nothing at all. Nothing yeah. at all. Especially if while you're allowing yourself to be witnessed to by them, mm -hmm. you're continuing your own spiritual study. Mm -hmm. You're still doing your work to remove all the blocks mm -hmm. to keep you from knowing that you are that way regardless of whether they tell you that way or not. Mm -hmm. but not so what are you doing? You're playing both ends against the middle. That's a win-win situation. Yeah. I'm making myself aware through my own personal spiritual study that I'm whole and complete, and I'm surrounded myself by friends who respect me and love me and acknowledge me, and I respect them and love them and acknowledge them. There is no way that's an that's a, a incorrect way to live. <laughs> <laughs> so anything in your mind to tell you there's something wrong with having people tell you that you're wonderful and you and you being open to that and willing to hear that, and there's nothing wrong with you even feeling like you need that. There's nothing wrong with feeling like you need that while you're working on not needing that. Yep. It's worse to be needing it than be pretending that you don't need it. And then you don't have nobody around giving it to you because you're trying to pretend you don't need it, but you know you need it. How do you know you need it? You just took a pill to commit suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a hint that your buddy's thinking through, you're not thinking too highly of yourself. You're on the bridge. Yes. Okay? So everything I'm saying, if you, if you ever listen back to my classes, you'll hear that everything that I'm saying is always empowering. It's always supporting you who you are. It's always telling you that you deserve to be happy. And then I can watch in myself and sometimes in the people that I'm talking to, you can watch our egos try to come up with some type of problem with me trying to do that. That's the funniest thing I can ever see. I'm here telling you deserve to be happy telling you that you, do, you deserve to have love from every direction, that you deserve unconditional love, that you are really valuable, and that there's a part of our mind that attracts every way it can to poke a hole in what I just said. <laughs> That's crazy, y'all. That's insane. Why would you want to disagree with somebody saying you deserve to be happy? And then you're going to try to figure out how is he wrong. That's the part of us that doesn't love us. That's the part of us that doesn't love us. That's the part of us that's continually creating the problems that we're trying to get away from. Yeah. That part of us that never wants to acknowledge that we are loving and lovable. Yeah. And I'm gonna remind you of it to the day that I transition. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I don't want to forget it myself. Right. I'm in a world where it's not on the news, buddy. That's right. I'm on the world, I'm in a world where I don't see it when I open the paper. I'm in a world where most people that I talk in the conversation is loving and supportive. If I don't make sure I hear this, then when am I going to hear it? And that's why we have classes like this. Because we're in a world where you don't hear that all the time. You, we don't hear it enough. So we have to be proactive and make sure that we hear it. And this is one time a week we can make sure we hear it. And then we can come together and fry our freaking egos. Instead of protecting them, we can fry them. You know, like, oh, okay, I want some ego with some little gravy on the side. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know there's a part of me that hates me. 
I know there's a part of me that thinks I don't deserve love. I know there's a part of me that thinks I need to be broke. I know there's a part of me that likes to make me sick. I know there's a part of me that feels angry and, and worries. And I'm not going to sit up here and deny that on the, in the, from the perspective that I'm being spiritual. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell the truth about it, and then I'm going to tell myself, I'm going to tell my, I'm going to be honest about what I feel, then I'm going to take it to the truth. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to side with what the truth says, which is I'm an innocent, juicy, luscious being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The chocolateness of the love of the chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> the chocolate <man. laughs> You know, I'm looking for who's running toward me, not away from me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm looking for who's headed in my direction. That's who loves you, who's heading towards you. Yeah. If you're having to stalk them, they may not be your soulmate. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Have you ever started any public speaking classes? I'll, uh, I'll join that. All right. That's awesome. Cool. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's like um, you don't have public speak. But what I tell myself is I'm not talking to strangers, I'm talking to myself. Mm -hmm. And that my only responsibility up here is to be as authentic as I possibly can mm -hmm. while being tempted to try to be the kind of person I think y'all want to hear right. so that y'all will come back. But since I never know who's going to come back anyway, I just cut that out and just start having a good time. <laughs> anybody that comes to my classes know there's no, the only thing that's consistent about my classes is that they're inconsistent. <laughs> that's it, you know. It, 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 and that's the way it should be because everybody is sent every week from the Holy Spirit. Yes. And so I don't know every week who the Holy Spirit is going to send. Yeah. But my ego used to say it had to do with my charisma. And the truth is saying it just has to do with God. Yes. So you, so just, so just have a good freaking time, girl. Mm -hmm. That's what Spirit's been telling me. Just start having a good time. Be, be my messenger, but really don't be concerned about who's going to get it, when they're going to get it, yes. how they're going to get it, if they're going to ever get it. He said, because if you do that, you are actually, that's a limitation on the giving, and you're imprisoning the very person that you're trying to give the gift to because you're trying to control whether or not they use what you're giving them. That's like going to somebody's wedding, giving them a toaster, and then the next morning they wake up you in the kitchen to make sure they use it. <laughs> <laughs> so if I tell you this truth, and yet I'm concerned about whether or not you do it, or whether or not you apply it, that's like me giving you the toaster and then trying to make sure you use it as I deem worthy. So I have to learn how to give my love, give the truth, and then let y'all go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let y'all go. Let y'all come and go as you need to come and go. Yeah. That I, I get attached to you all, you know, because I care about you. And, and yeah. So it's like I get used to seeing seeing you, and then I, then I don't see you. And then there's a part of me go, oh, yeah. you know, then the Holy Spirit go, that's the best thing that could ever happen to you. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's right. Wherever they are today, that's exactly what they need to be. That would be the best thing in the world for them to do. Yeah. And whoever comes yeah. here today, that's the perfect people that you're supposed to be talking to right now because no one is absent mm -hmm. whom you need. He said, nobody's absent from your life who you need, and the only people that are absent are the people you don't need. Yes. The only people that are absent are the people you don't need. Oh. The only people that are absent are the people you don't need. The only people who are absent oh. are the people you don't need. The only people that's absent are the people you don't need right now. Yes. The people th that are here in your life right now, they are the people that all your gifts come through. Yeah. They, they are the best people in the world for your gifts to come through. Nobody's missing that you need. So if you got like an ex, and you like going, oh, I wonder what they doing right <laughs> now. I'm gonna hear this new crazy black man. They might be in Hawaii. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, the truth is, the best thing that could ever happen to you is that they're in Hawaii. Yes. The best thing that ever happened to you is that you're here right now. You know. Yeah. That will make you feel better. There's yes. no way you can use that perception and not feel better. Yep. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're going through. A true perception is always a perception that will lift you up no matter what the situation mm -hmm. is. Even if you lost a loved one through what appeared to be death, if the truth told you that that person is not their body, they're a spiritual mm -hmm. being that lives forever, mm -hmm. that they are not dead, they just dropped their communication device, mm -hmm. and they're still continuing their spiritual development, mm -hmm. you can't tell me that you wouldn't feel better about that person's transition than to think that they were a body that's now gone forever, that's just riding in the ground. Right. Mm -hmm. See, the truth, I can't prove to you what happens after death, right? Right. But you got two ways of looking at it. 
You can look at it like they're gone because they're just bodies, or you can look at it like they're unlimited spiritual beings who continue their spiritual soldier and you will meet again. Mm -hmm. You can't prove either one of those perspectives. How did you know which one was probably the one to go with? The one that makes you feel lighter. <laughs> the one that makes you feel more love. It's not complicated. We just try to make it complicated. It's not complicated. You, we just try to make it complicated. Yes. So, Earl, um, based on what you were saying, then, um, the fact that I am still attracted to bodies and see certain people with just bodies in an attractive I'm personally not attracted to bodies at all. I shouldn't feel guilty about that. I should, I should see that as... Never, never, try not to ever mess with a body that you feel guilty about. Because you'll punish yourself for everything you do with a body that you feel guilty about messing with, being with, or doing anything with. You're guaranteed to hurt yourself through the body that you feel guilty about being intimate with. So you're going to get rid of the guilt if it's all possible. Then extend. But I should see that as like an opportunity where the Holy Spirit is going to send me a beautiful body to remind me of the truth, right? Well, the Holy Spirit is not going to necessarily send you a beautiful body to remind you of the truth. You can be reminded of the truth through everything that you see. Mm -hmm. You don't really need a beautiful body to remind you of the truth. Because beauty, as you define beauty, is not real beauty anyway. It's just beauty that, as you define beauty. Mm -hmm. So the truth is, we, at the human level, we don't even know what beauty is. Mm -hmm. At the human level, all we do is have preferences and scripts and, and, and fantasies. Mm -hmm. And then we're looking for that which conforms to the fantasy that we have. And then we say, that's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like I like the way you are now, there's somebody that will love you exactly the way you are now, exactly the way your body is right now. You don't have to change your body in order to be loved. You don't have to do nothing in order to be loved. That's only ego love that says you can't be loved until you lose twenty pounds. Okay, that's not real love anyway. Right? So there's somebody if you weigh nine hundred pounds, there's somebody right now in the hood somewhere going, I just need me a nine hundred pound woman. Yeah. That'd be the best thing that ever happened yeah. to me in my whole life. Oh God, just give me one that pound. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever you are, there's somebody that can love you exactly the way you are because people who know what love is love beyond the body. In fact, loving beyond the body, your body looks always looks good to a person that loves you. The more you love a person, the better they look to you. Yes. There have been some people that when I was in love with them or thought I was in love with them, they looked really good. And then when I didn't wasn't in love with them, I was wondering, what in the world, how did I end up with them? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I remember I was dating a girl in high school, and, and my sister would come into the bedroom and take her picture and set it face down on the chest. And I would go, what are you doing? She said, she's ugly. I was like, what? She's not ugly? That's one of the most beautiful women I've ever known. Then when we broke up later, I was like, she's just kind of ugly. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was before my spiritual days. <laughs> Now nobody's ugly, everybody's ugly. Right. <laughs> I have no preferences. <laughs> if you believe that, then I got a couple of chairs on the Golden Gate Bridge that I'd like to share with you too. <laughs> of course I have preferences. But then it's about admitting it and recognizing that if I walk out of here today, what's the friggin' point? We're gonna get to the friggin' point right after the love offering. All right. All right. So let's stop right now. Let's do that. I'm a full-time teacher of the Course in Miracles. Thank you. I don't charge a set fee for my classes because I want everybody to be able to come regardless of their financial situation. So I really appreciate your financial expressions of appreciation. <laughs> On the internet, those of you who want to also share a financial expression of appreciation, you can go to my website, pearlcurdy.com. Thank you so much for the generosity that I've been experiencing to allow me to continue my ministry. One-on-one -on -one sessions I do called clarity sessions are available where I take whatever your situation is and I apply the Course in Miracles to, uh, to that situation and everything that I've studied. Because your situation is not original. And your situation is not a situation that there's not a solution to. So I'm available for clarity sessions. Go to my website and it will explain it in detail. Uh, what's the other thing? One more thing. Tuesday night, I'm doing a class called The Way of Mastery. It's a kick butt, awesome, friggin' class. And that's at 7 o'clock on Tuesday nights here. And uh, next Sunday, the 2nd of June, uh, Anna Pajal is going to be doing my Course of Miracles class. So if you, she's an incredible Course of Miracles teacher, come here next Sunday. She'll be doing that class. I'll be in Connecticut doing, a, uh, doing several talks. So uh, then after that, I'll be here for a minute. So next Sunday, you've got a real opportunity yes. for an incredible treat. 
So give yourself, you know, new teachers, and because uh, sometimes you can hear this, you can hear something through one person that you don't hear through another person, mm -hmm. or you can hear it through both people. So I don't, I know that some people will never hear the truth through me, but they hear it through Anna. Some people will hear it through me that wouldn't hear it through Anna. Somebody would not hear it through both of us, and then some people will hear it through both of us. Mm -hmm. So, so always remember that love is going to get to you in the form that it can get to you in. Love is always trying to get to you through the form it can get to you in. But when you are addicted to what you have decided and how you have decided it should come, that many times blocks the blessings that could be coming to you because you set up too many conditions for spirit to answer your prayer. Mm -hmm. you know. And so I would, I would invite you, if it looks like you've been wrestling with something for a long time and you haven't seen a change, you might want to entertain you might want to enter entertain letting go of your condition mm -hmm. about about why, how God should do it for you. Ah, oh, because it could it, it could come to you better than you even imagined. Mm -hmm. How would you like that? What would it yes, take for this to show up for me in ways beyond my wildest imagination? That's what you want to say. What would it take for what I want to show up for me in ways beyond my wildest imagination? In ways that I didn't even think of. Be willing to have answers you didn't think of. So what do you what do you want to walk out of here with today? Number one, you want to walk out of here by just try to make the decision that you are not going to try to manipulate the people around you through anger and guilt. Yeah. If you want to walk out of here today and say, I know I still have the habit of still getting mad because people don't do what I want them to do, or withholding because they don't do what I want them to do. I recognize this in error, and I'm going to try as much as I can to stop using guilt and anger to manipulate people into staying with me or doing what I want them to do. Because even if they do, they're building resentment, and so therefore at some point a separation is going to happen anyway. So what you want to do is, you want to first of all say, you know what, I'm connected to my source. Love is going to come to me in every way that it can get to me, and I'm not going to be attached to the form that it comes through, because that could be keeping me from receiving the love I want right now. If I've decided it should come through you, and you don't want to give it to me, and Spirit has like a thousand people that wants to give it to me, but I've decided it's going to be you, then I'm really stopping myself from receiving the love. So do I want love or do I want you? Do I want love or do I want you? See, see that's what you got to ask yourself. Do I want love or do I want this body? Do I want love? Because I can have love. But this body with this ego, this ego and this body might not want me. But love will come to me through whoever love can come to me through. So anybody that says they would have love, it just means that they're not aware that love is trying to get to them in some form that they're missing because of the beliefs that they have. And their beliefs are keeping them from seeing the love that's trying to get to them. And so I'm reminding you that the love that you're seeking is there, that the only love that's going to satisfy you is the love of God. That's the only, what does that mean? That which created me, the love of that which created me, that's the love that's going to be satisfying to me. And that love can come to me through everything and everyone and all that is. And I'm open to that. It's the only love that's real. And I'm going to look out to see where I'm trying to get or it look like somebody's trying to get from me. So it's really about how can I give. When you say you don't feel someone's love, it just means you're not giving it. Because you can only feel what you are giving. You never are feeling what somebody else is giving. You're always <laughs> feeling what you're giving. I'll say you love me because I'm loving you. I'll say you care about me because I'm caring about you. How many times have you thought somebody cared about you in a special way because you cared about them and found out they didn't feel that way about you at all? Mm -hmm. But you could have sworn they loved you. No, you were feeling your love. Mm -hmm. You were not feeling their love. Wow. So love is what you are feeling. You're giving it. So when I see you, I give myself love. And then I see you, and I give myself love. Then I see you, and I give myself love. Because by my love for you, I'm feeling it. It's got to come through me before it gets to you. Mm -hmm. So everything I feel has an effect on me before it goes out to anybody else. So when I'm angry at everybody, I got to feel the anger that I'm trying to give to you. And you know it's really a trip? You don't even feel the freaking anger I feel for you. <laughs> Here I am, attacking myself and making myself feel bad, giving myself a cold, and making myself age and killing my body, and you don't even freaking feel it. 
So what's the point? None. So all of a sudden you'll stop. <clears throat> Say, hey, what's the point? If I'm trying to make you suffer and I'm the only one that's feeling it, something's wrong with that picture. Yeah. <laughs> so think about that the next time you're all upset with somebody that you got grievances with. They aren't feeling it <laughs> at all. <laughs> and if they really don't like you, they drag you killing yourself through yes. this. It's like, oh, you don't like me. And so then you're attacking yourself all day long, criticizing me. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you're in your ego, that's the way you look at it. Oh, you hate me. Good. <laughs> because you're just attacking yourself. You're my enemy and you're killing yourself. You're my enemy and you're taking your own body out. Thank you for such a loving thing to do. You mean me no good, yet you're taking you out? With my more holy self says, well, I really want you not to do that even to yourself. I want you to feel only love. That's what you deserve because God is. So take a breath. I'm gonna wind this up right quick. Are you with me? Yeah, with you. I want you to hear this. This is Reverend Yolanda. <laughs> and Reverend Yolanda is, is a good friend of mine that I've met up in Connecticut. This is an incredible singer and chorus student, and she's funky. And I love the performance that she does. He does, she does, he does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm, 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 mm. So I'm going to do a quick review. Are you ready? Yeah. Now, right now I order you to forget most of what you heard me say. <laughs> when you leave the room, you will remember very little of anything that I shared. <laughs> People Check. will be saying you went to that class. You say, yeah, that was really cool. But what did you say? <laughs> I don't know. You just need to come. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. <laughs> that can satisfy you. Mm, mm, mm. I say there is no other love that can satisfy you. Because there is no other love. God, because there is no other love. Now that's a force of miracles that's the for you to be happy. But do you know you have free will and since you have free will, nothing changes until you decide that you're ready for it to change. And there is no other love but the love of God that's going to satisfy you. So you only want to have a love that's complete. You want to have a love that's whole. You want to have a love that's not getting. You want to have a love that's not manipulative. You want to have a love that someone's not trying to use anger and guilt to manipulate you. You don't want relationships where people are trying to use anger and guilt to manipulate you. And if you're doing that, if you're doing that yourself, I say, cut it out. <laughs> I say, cut it out. You got to stop doing what you don't want to be done to you. You got to stop what you don't want to be done to you. You got to all that I give is given to myself. All that I give is given to myself. I deserve love. Woo! I deserve love. Tell yourself, Sally, I deserve love. And let me tell you, you deserve love. Love is trying to get to your butt 
everywhere you can is trying to get to your butt. But you keep on blocking it, it's trying to get to your butt. Love is trying to get to your butt. Let the love in stop blocking the love. Let the love in stop criticizing yourself. So it's a big bonfire in the middle of the room. So make sure you sign up. All right. All right. All right. I want to tell y'all right now, I need you as much as you need me. And may the course be with you. I appreciate y'all. Thanks for coming on this video. You are blessing my life. Come to the level of our service. We have a powerful, beautiful church. And just come check us out. And hugs are available. <laughs> I love those quiet classes, don't you? Get uh, <laughs> what? You love me? I love you too. It's a fact. It's a fact.
Oh, uh, yeah. 